first thing you need to decide on when it comes to designing a workout program is your training split. So this basically means what muscle groups you are going to work out on each day of the week. And before that, even you kind of need to work out how many days is going to be realistic for you to train. And then you can decide on the split because depending on how many days you want to train, that will impact the split that is ideal for you. And also where you're at in terms of your training experience and your skill level, that is going to come into play when choosing an appropriate split. So this video, I wanna talk about this and discuss what an ideal training split looks like in particular for body recomposition. So if you wanna lose body fat and build muscle at the same time. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodie and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health, and your life. So we're gonna talk a little bit about programming in this video. I actually got a question that I kind of wanna answer directly because I think it helps you to hear it in this language and then for me to kind of dissect it and discuss what I would do differently and why. So this person wants to know what a ideal workout split for body recomposition is. She was thinking working out Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning doing upper body, arms, back and abs, and then also in the afternoon doing lower body and hit. So glutes, thighs, hips and hips. So high intensity interval training. So in short, she's saying she wants to do a full body workout spread over two sessions, Monday, Wednesday and Friday not just weights though, also including some hit cardio at the end. Then she's also given me her goals, which are 11 line abs, bigger butt, thicker thighs, toned arms, slim back, and 22 inch waist. So I wanna to touch on that first. So rather than having specifics like a 22 inch waist, I would prefer you have a goal look in mind because everyone's body structure is different. And whether it's actually possible for you to get to a 22 inch waist, no one can really tell you that. And you might look better at a 24 inch waist. Having that number in a way, it could mess with your head. It could mess with you making progress. And in some cases, like if your waist isn't really changing, you can still be making progress. Depending on your starting point, you can still be losing body fat. It just comes down to your bone structure and what your body is kind of designed to look like. Now that's not to say you can't build muscle in certain places and grow your glutes, get thicker thighs by growing your quads and your hamstrings, getting more toned arms, like that's all possible, but I just wouldn't recommend aiming for 11 line abs and a 22 inch waist. It's like too specific. If you really wanna focus on some numbers, I would recommend having some strength goals in mind because that's going to give you something to work towards. And in doing that, if you are getting stronger and hitting those numbers, then as a result, you are going to be building a better looking body building muscle, losing body fat, given that you're also eating the right amount of food. In terms of the number on the scale and your waist measurement, those numbers have far less meaning than what you think. And I always say this, you can look better and more toned and leaner at a heavier weight and maybe a like higher waist measurement than you think as well. Even for me right now, I'm in a build and I have been for a while, so my measurements are definitely up. I haven't taken them because I don't wanna get distracted by that number going up and like kind of, it is a little bit psychological. Even if you know what you're doing, that number can get to your head. And so it's just easier for me not to take it. But I know by how like my pants are fitting around my waist, right? They are a bit tighter and that is fine. And what could happen if I was so focused on the number or so focused on reaching a certain number is I don't allow myself to go through the actual process to get there. And in some cases that might mean gaining muscle and really focusing on gaining muscle for a decent amount of time so that your waist doesn't go down. It really depends on where you're starting from. And I know you say you're skinny fat, but even in that scenario, like I can think of a few clients actually who like they're going through the body recomposition process, but their waist isn't actually going down. They're really focused on building muscle. And because they've already got a small waist, the process is skewed to the muscle building direction. And so they're kind of just gaining muscle 
and their body fat is either like going down a little bit or kind of staying the same. And like, that is so worth it. The more muscle you can get on your body, especially at the start, the better. Anyway, so coming back to this training split, if you want to work out three days a week and if you are kind of new to training as well or coming back after a bit of a break, I do actually love a full body training split for this purpose. However, I would not recommend splitting your workouts into two over the course of the day. First of all, if you have time to do that as well as getting your steps in, that's amazing but most people don't have time to do that. So that's one of the reasons. But more importantly, if you are really pushing yourself and pushing that intensity, meaning choosing heavy enough weights and aiming to get stronger in your workouts, you probably won't have the energy to go back and train in the afternoon as well, especially if you're not eating enough food, which most of you don't eat enough food because you're too scared of gaining body fat. So by effectively doing two workouts in the day, even though you think you're doing more, because you're kind of putting less effort into each of those workouts, you're actually not. You're basically half assing your workouts, which I know in the moment you probably think you're not, but when you really understand what pushing yourself feels like, you will understand that it's actually kind of not a fun idea to be working out twice in one day. What would be far more effective is actually choosing exercises that kind of work out multiple muscle groups in one go. So doing a full body split, one workout for three days per week and filling it with compound lifts. So if you think about, okay, so you said you wanna do arms, back and abs. Rather than breaking them down to doing like bicep curls for arms, just say, and some tricep extensions, and then some isolation back exercises, just say you do some lat pull downs and some rows, and then you do some ab exercises. Why don't you do some deadlifts, right? Because they're going to work your back, they're going to work your arms a bit, they're going to work your abs, they're going to work your legs and your glutes as well. So you actually do all the muscle groups pretty much from one exercise, and then you can do another compound lift, just say some like chin ups, they're gonna work your arms, they're gonna work your back, they're gonna work your abs. And then you can do some accessories after that. If you put more effort into those compound lifts, you are going to get far better results. And those compound lifts are the lifts that you're really going to be able to push that intensity on. Doing some bicep curls, like it's a lot harder to push intensity on isolation exercises like a bicep curl and even ab exercises as well so much harder than pushing that intensity on those compound lifts like squats, deadlifts, chin-ups, uh, bent over rows, presses, bench press, shoulder press. Those exercises should form the bulk of your workouts. Like for me at the moment, I'm training five days a week, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all I'm doing is squat, deadlift, benching. And then Tuesday and Thursday is pressing and some like glute accessory work. Obviously though, I'm at a different level, but you could actually do something like that and get really good results. Now, in terms of the lower body session, doing your glutes, thighs and hips, what I'd recommend there is really focusing on, again, compound lifts, squats, deadlifts, lunges if you're at a gym doing leg press and then adding some accessories like some leg extensions and leg curls that's really all you need and then so it comes down to kind of choosing a main exercise that you want to focus on monday wednesday friday and then maybe choosing a second main exercise as well from a different body part so you might do an upper main exercise like a chin up and then you might do a lower main exercise and then do some accessory exercises like the isolation stuff. And then you do that for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then as long as you are getting stronger on those main exercises every week, you are making progress. The isolation exercises might be harder to get stronger on, but you can definitely try. Now, the other thing I want to say is with the HIIT stuff, I wouldn't even worry about that. Like again, I cannot stress how important it is to realize you wanna be aiming for intensity in terms of weight and how hard you're pushing yourself. You don't need to train intensity in terms of getting your heart rate up and sweating more. And a lot of you are doing HIIT 
not the correct way. Doing weighted hit, like just say you do squats for 45 seconds and then you have a rest for 15 seconds and then you do something else for 45 seconds or say you do it for 30 seconds and then you rest for 30 seconds. That's not even hit. Hit is literally going all out, like as hard as you can until your heart is burning and like you feel like it's gonna, you feel like you're gonna throw up almost. Doing that for a very short amount of time, well, you can, you can do hit a few ways, but the idea is you are going as hard as you can for just say 30 seconds and then you rest for usually three times that time. So you might go all out for 30 seconds, but then you're resting and recovering for like two minutes. Doing it the way like F45 and those gyms kind of teach, it's not actually HIIT. So I wouldn't even worry about doing HIIT at the moment. Put all that energy and focus into your weights and that is what's going to give you the biggest payoff right now if you are starting off as skinny fat. Now, once you get through a phase or two of doing the full body split, I would do like an upper lower full body split, or you might do an upper lower upper split and then cycle it. So then the next week you do a lower upper lower and move through like that, or you might cycle it in your programs like that. There's so many ways to set it up, but the idea is you are really working out each muscle group twice a week. And so that is why those compound lifts become even more important if you're training three days a week, because that will allow you to kind of cover all the muscle groups in only three days. Now, if you were to go to a four day split, that's when I would still start off with a full body split, to be honest, but then you might move to an upper lower split where you do upper twice a week, lower twice a week. And you might have more of a focus on glutes on one of the lower days, or you might have a like hip dominant like lower day where you do a lot more hinging movement patterns. But then the other day you might do a lot more squat focused movement patterns or quad dominant, like the leg dominant stuff. And that's how you can balance it out. But you'd still be working your glutes, your hamstrings, your quads, and your adductors even twice a week. And then once you make a lot of progress and you get to a certain point, that's when body part splits, in my opinion, start to become more effective. You might do glutes like a specialization program where you literally do your glutes five days a week or four days a week and that's all and you give them a lot of frequency. And then you can move on to doing kind of like a back specialization program. You can move through phases like that, but I wouldn't do that to start with and those phases are more effective when you're actually eating enough food again like that is so important if you want to build muscle eventually you are going to have to come out of maintenance mode and you are going to have to go into a small surplus and that is when i would use those kind of specialization programs especially but it's not always necessary either you kind of got to see where your body's at and how it's responding to everything. Continuing to just do upper lower splits, that works very well in most cases. And that is all for this video. Thank you for the question. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you liked it, please like it. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if that's the case, I will see you in the next video.